the best version of Howdy Life in I ever heard. <laughs> wow. You know, uh, before I get into all this, what an honor it is to be here, I want to say, you know how entertainers and rock stars and hillbilly singers all come in with their entourage late and, you know, casually just ease in, and that's what it looked like we did tonight. But actually, in Norman tonight, I coached my son's Little League team, and uh, we were playing to see who went to the Super Bowl of Norman School District. And I'm glad to say that after five stinking overtimes, the Roosevelt Mud Dogs are going to the Super Bowl, baby. And, and my son's in here somewhere, and he didn't get his tux on, so he's in his football pants. Show us stand up, Steeler. He's in his football pants back there. <laughs> Anyway, it, it is a tremendous honor. This hit me by surprise. I thought uh, that I'd be like 70 or something and uh, be laying up here in Mercy Hospital and y'all say, hey, we're going to induct you in the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. <laughs> but uh, I, it's, a, it's a wonderful honor. Uh, I'm so honored to have the great ex-commandant and Supreme Allied Commander of Europe, Europe General James Jones, four-star, here with us tonight, taking time out of his schedule. <laughs> I met him uh, at the Pentagon in uh, 2001, and I'd written this song called Courtesy of the Red, White, and Blue. And uh, I was not going to record the song, I was just going to play it to, I knew there was going to be a lot of troops that were going to be deploying, and so when we were around him, I was going to play it as a morale lifter. And uh, there was 2,000 Marines getting ready to ship to Afghanistan at Constitution Hall. I'd been to the Pentagon and met him. He brought me out on stage. I played five or six of my songs and this out of the blue with me and my acoustic, I laid it on him, and there was not a dry eye or an unclenched fist in the house, and he was so grateful that he came over and he said, the world has to hear this song, and I said, I don't think the world's ready for this song. And he goes, well, our soldiers and Marines are ready for it, so lay it on them. We recorded it, and you know, through all the controversy that it's caused, till you go out there and you set the trenches with those boys, you don't understand how important that song really was. It is way more than just booting your ass, it's way more. There's a big difference. People say I'm a poli political lightning rod. There's a huge difference between politics and being patriotic. And if you stand, if you stand for patriotism, if you stand for patriotism, you're going to upset some people. You know, if you're anti-war, you're going to upset some people. You're just going to do it. But I was raising, where I was raised in the oil field, and I was taught to fight for everything I ever got in my life. I didn't get it easy. I had to play the bars till I was 29 years old. That's you know, a long time ago for me, and a lot of dates, and I had to fight for everything I got. So when I see our soldiers going in, it doesn't matter. It's not up to me to decide. It's, I'm a songwriter. It's not up to me to decide what the politics are in it. I just know that somebody's going in and doing their duty that our country's asked them to do, and so I support that every time. I got, a lot of, uh, I got a lot of people here that uh, I'm real grateful are here. It's my family and my music family. The uh, great uh, success that we've had is not just due to me. Um, you know, the reason I wasn't here tonight is I was coaching that team down there. There are things more important to me than, than Toby Keith, and uh, that's my family. Trisha, my wife, and Stelan, my son, and my daughter, Crystal, and Shelly. That's my family. And I'm thank, thank you guys for being here tonight. Um, there's two people that aren't here. Uh, my mother's here. Thanks, Mom, for coming. My sister's here. My brother's in Florida. He couldn't be here. Um, there's two people that I dearly wish were here tonight. And one would be my father, because he would be down at the coffee shop in the morning going, am I an Okie? Well, hell, my boy just got, the oldest boy of mine just got inducted into the <laughs> Oklahoma Hall of Fame, you know? That's, he bought me that Ford truck out there. You know. <laughs> and my dear grandmother, who passed away about five months ago, who when I was eight years old, she had a nightclub right on the Arkansas-Oklahoma line. And uh, I would go stay with her in the summer while I was out of school. And she would bring me to this nightclub. And I wasn't old enough to sit out front. I was only, you know, 
9, 10, 11 years old, and I would sit in the kitchen, and when they would fill the beer boxes up and take the bottles to be returned, I would go out and get them and bring them in the back, and I would watch through the window, and I would watch the band play, and they had horns, and they had, they had saxophones, and they had trumpets and guitars and piano, brushes on the drums, and, and they would play everything from Benny Goodman to Bad Bad Leroy Brown to Margaritaville, and people would dance and eat a steak and shrimp, and supper clubs like that don't exist anymore, but I would watch that, and she bought me a guitar, and some of y'all will remember these old stores, Otasco, she, you remember that, Oklahoma Tire and Supply Company? <laughs> she bought me like a $15 Otasco flat box guitar, right? And she goes, if you want to get up there, you've got to learn how to play this. And so that was the start to uh, my songwriting. And uh, got together in a garage band. Uh, we, we started making music. I didn't understand why we had to sing other people's songs. So I started writing my own songs. Uh, my band, we put this little garage band together, Easy Money. We started right down there and more. Hit the feed store, uh, which was an old, let somebody laugh, you've been in there. <laughs> you should be ashamed. <laughs> that, was a, that was a stinking dive, buddy. <laughs> but it was like, we'll give you $35 to split up five ways and a beer. How about that? So. So anyway, we played down there on 27th Street, and I don't know if it burnt down or a tornado got it or something. But, uh, but anyway, it developed, and it developed, and it developed, and we kept fighting, and we took it out on the road, and we had our dreams. And, and our, my dreams were always bigger than some of the other guys' dreams. And one by one, they fell off, and I kept striving, and I kept striving, and I kept striving. And, uh, you know, I never moved to Nashville. I was told when I finally got my record deal, got to move to Nashville where you can, and I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be Nashville's poster boy, you know. I don't have to have the CMA award shows to do what I do every day. I've got a lot of things that are more important to me than going to somebody's award show out there and, and representing that side of it. I make music and I'm a songwriter and I have a family and I have another life. And so Oklahoma has always been my roots. I've never been able to live anywhere else. Anywhere I, time I go somewhere else and I come back, it, it's home again to me. And uh, there's a lot of irony in living where I live. Um, I grew up kind of in the shadows of the Oklahoma Sooners football stadium and campus. And my first hit song ever that I wrote was Should Have Been a Cowboy, and it's Oklahoma State's theme song. <laughs> so, where I was raised as a country boy and a farm boy and I sold ag blue gold sausage and all those things, you know, when you're in agriculture class, it would have been easy for me to just be an Oklahoma State cowboy. It, it would have, really should have been. I mean, that's probably the direction that I, that I would have went. But I grew up selling Cokes in that OU stadium and it became, it got in my blood and I was a Sooner fan from that day forward. And everywhere I go from Iraq to Japan to all the great 50 states here, Everywhere I go, people know that I am a face of Oklahoma, and they make me know it from the crowd. I'll see signs held up. They may be Oklahoma, they may be Oklahoma State signs. They may be letting me know, hey, dog. <laughs> you know? Or they'll hold the Oklahoma State flag up, the uh, state of Oklahoma flag up. But they always, Germany, people know that I'm from here, and I would never, ever live anywhere else. I am a Oklahoma Sooner. All right? <laughs> it's wonderful everywhere you go, people try to tell you these Okie jokes and put you at the butt of it. I take a lot of pride in that, man. I'm an Okie, and if you think you got to come tell me that joke, I dig it, because that's what I am. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just, I completely dig it. I want to uh, congratulate all the other inductees that are here tonight. And uh, this is a big event, and this is a wonderful thing for you guys to be thoughtful enough to think of me and consider me for, uh, for the Hall of Fame of Oklahoma. It's a wonderful thing. I hate to eat beets, and I hate boring speeches. So I'm going to say good night, all right? God bless y'all. Thanks for having me.